If you subscribe to the channel, you'll get lots of interesting videos like this one. And if you like the video, it'll really help us out. Please comment down below for any other interesting things that also really helps us out as well. Hi, and welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're going to look at this inverse homomorphism problem, or inverse morphism if you prefer. So the language here is h to the power minus 1 of a language L. And that's all the strings in sigma star, such that if we apply h to that particular string, that string is in the language. So this is the so-called inverse homomorphism. Before we were talking about uh, morphisms, which is we're looking at h of w for all strings in uh, w in L. So we take all the strings in L, then apply H to them. Here we're looking at all the possible strings such that applying H to them is an L. And I'll remind you that if H is a homomorphism, it's a function that takes strings to strings. So from some alphabet to a different alphabet. With a peculiar property that if you have a string uh, that has two parts, X and Y, then you can split the... Um, the function h right here into two parts where you compute it on h first on each of the individual parts and then you combine them together. So you can actually see from this and what we saw before is that we can think of h in terms of its individual characters. We apply h to its individual characters and then we string them all together. So that's the peculiar property of, of morphisms. But here we have inverse homomorphisms which is all the strings that are in uh, L that can be reached by some string in W via the H function. So let's actually look at this. So if we have a sigma star right here, oops, so we have sigma star, and let's say that uh, W is right here, then let's say that obviously L is a sub. Uh, is a subset of gamma star. We don't know how big L is compared to sigma star, but let's just say that this is L right here. Then uh, W is going to map to something over here. So this is the H of W. So if we uh, are trying to make a machine for L uh, right here, if we have a machine for L right here, it's gonna be taking an input um, from some string in here. And what we want to determine is if this string is mapped to by something over here. And what we need to do is if that's the case, we need to accept that string. So it may very well be possible that this green circle right here is the set of all things that can be reached. So maybe, oops, so maybe some string right here, uh, right here, uh, let's call it Z, cannot be reached by any string in sigma star. Uh, just as an example, if um, if uh, sigma has like zeros and ones in the alphabet, and L has zeros, ones, and twos in the alphabet, and all of the strings in sigma star map to some string without a two in them, then any string with a two over here cannot possibly be reached by anything over here. Okay, so it, it very well be possible that there's some string that can't be reached right here. Okay, so the key thing that we should understand here is that um, if we have a DFA for this language L, then uh, we get an input uh, Z, and what we want to do with this, so what we want is to determine um, if there exists a um, W, string W, such that applying H to it is equal to Z. That, that's our goal right here. Because we're getting some input over here, it may or may not be in this green circle or, or outside of it. So what we want to do is we want to see if something can map to it, okay? So the, this is where the homomorphism property really kicks in, that we can look at the individual characters. So let's say that we have, um, so what we want to do is we want to show regular languages are closed under inverse homomorphism. So let's let uh, D be 
a DFA for L. And of course, what we want to do is to make something like a DFA for the inverse homomorphism language. So what, what we want is a DFA, let's call it D prime, for the inverse homomorphism of, of L. So then let's actually look at this. So if we actually think about this, uh, let's, let's visualize what this DFA D here looks like. So it has a start state and it has transitions, states, and whatever. But no matter what happens, no matter what input we feed into this thing, it's always going to be among its individual states. It's never gonna, it's never gonna have uh, something that looks like this. So something like that will never occur. So it, obviously, because we made the DFA for it. So what we sh will do here is, instead of thinking about individual characters right here, think about what the H function would do to that individual character. So what we're going to do for D right here, uh, D prime, so D prime has the same states uh, and final states as uh, D, because we want to accept exactly when the original DFA accepted. But it turns out that we all that we need to do is to modify the transitions. Uh, so only need to modify transitions. And it's actually really, 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 really easy. So what we need to do is this transition function on some state Q and input A. So I'll remind, her, I'll remind you that this is the transition for a D prime for the DFA we're making. So then what are we going to do then? We're going to figure out where the, ori the original DFA D for the language L would have gone if we have read the string that is H of A, okay? So remember the DFA that we have right now is supposedly the the one where we apply H to every single character. So we're doing it in reverse here. We're saying that the D prime machine we're making on input A, we figure out where the original DFA would have gone on H of A. And then that's where this transition is going to be sent to. So this is gonna be the transition function for D from the same state Q, because the states never changed, and H of A. And I'll remind you that this is the transition for D. And in fact, that's the entire, um, uh, entire construction. The only thing we need to do is to modify the, the transitions, nothing else. And why is this right? So what we need to figure out is, um, does, does this in fact accept exactly the inverse homomorphism language? And if we think about it, well, if we look at some computation that occurs in this thing in D prime, then we're gonna be reading a bunch of characters in a row. But in the other machine, we're going to be, if we follow the transitions in, oops, that are involved in, in figure out where H of A would have went, then we'll end up at the exact same state because they're defined to be the exact same state. And because of the homomorphism property, then we will have uh, exactly the same uh, set of states in essence that we're visiting. This one will visit more because it's got potentially more uh, states that it's seeing because this is a whole string. But it will see, this computation will see the same states as this one. So uh, it'll see more, but uh, this every state in here will be seen in here, and in fact, the other the reverse argument is also true. So, and I invite you to actually write out a full fledged proof in the comments. But that's the basic idea. So, hopefully, that was interesting. Leave additional comments down below about inverse homomorphisms. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. 
And as always, I'll see you next time.